Two teams battle on islands hovering over the void. Their goal is to break into their opponent's bastion and activate the machine in order to overload it. To aid their battle, they must activate pads of their own color and collect resources such as wood, food, and arrows. Their pads on the opponent's side grant effects such as strength or resistance which is helpful for offensive pushes. All the while, Adventure Mode forces the players to keep a wide assortment of tools handy. Welcome to Calamity. Hello, my name is Mr. Scary Muffin, and I've been a tester for Calamity since its inception. This tutorial is intended to bring a brand new player fully up to speed on the ebb and flow of Calamity. If you already have some experience with the map, you may wish to skip past the basics and jump right into the advanced topics. You can find the time skip links in the video description below. Let's proceed. When you first spawn, you'll be taken to the lobby. Here, you can see the whole map, and you can also join the teams as well as spectator mode. There are simple tutorials of all the game's mechanics laid out for you to try out. The first game mechanic that you'll encounter are the resource pads. There are three pads in total the wood and food pad, the leather pad, and the arrow pad. To start crafting the resource, simply step over the pressure plate. 30 seconds later, make sure you are back on the pad. Lights will indicate how much time has passed and the pad will grant resources based on how many team members are on the pad. If there are no members on the pad, nothing will be granted. However, whether items were granted or not, the pads require a 30 second cooldown before it can be activated again. This is also indicated by the lights. You can also step on the pressure plate at any time to see whether the pad is cooling down or if it is in the middle of crafting. Similar to the resource pads are the effects pads. These pads are located on the opposing side of the map. Activate them and make sure that you are standing on the pad after 30 seconds casting period and your entire team will gain an effect. There are three effects pads in total. Haste for mining, strength for attacks, and resistance for endurance. The final mechanic is the button room itself which is located in the heart of your opponent's bastion. Toggle the button in order to activate the machine. This will also activate a beacon that will grant haste to all players in the area. Lights and server announcements will indicate your progress. If you can get your opponent's machine to 100%, you win. At the upper bridge between the two lanes of Calamity is a large experience pad. This pad is similar to the resource pad, except that any team may activate it. After a casting period of one minute, every member of the team with majority control of the pad will earn one level of experience. The members on the pad itself earn an additional bonus level. Experience can be spent in the enchanting vestibule, located underneath the bastion. Enchantments and their price are clearly marked. Hold the target item in your hand and walk over the pressure plate to enchant it. The final mechanic to note is adventure mode. Especially in the later part of the match, it can be game changing to have a shovel, axe, and pick ready to break down walls. Here's a typical rollout. Once the game starts, run to the starting chest and grab an axe. Then, Take the upper path and hit the wooden, pad, wooden food pad immediately. Chop down a few logs and put down a crafting table for your team. Then run over to the leather pad and activate that. Head back to the wood and food pad, and once the wood and food pad pops out, you can head back to the leather pad and wait to collect that. If timed correctly and done with the entire team, your whole team should receive enough wood, food, and leather to last them for the whole game. The timing between the activation of the wood, food pad, and leather pad is important, since team members can lag behind or get stuck in the cobwebs. The time it takes for you to chop some trees and make a crafting table is a buffer to ensure that the whole team can get everything together. 
As your team becomes more coordinated, you can lessen that buffer time. After the initial rollout, your team will most likely start tackling various tasks. One member should get stone tools from the nearby stone, while another should make a path up to the arrow pad above, usually by completing the ladder route. Additionally, a member should make bows and craft the remaining leather into armor for faster recoveries. It's recommended that you take down all the cobwebs from this tree as soon as possible, as respawning teammates tend to get caught in it. As the game progresses, the roles of each team member may change. However, these are the typical jobs that need to be filled at all times. First, there should be a player up in the arrow pads constantly restocking arrows for the team, as well as keeping track of the opponent movements and as well as watching over the experience pad. There should be a player that is focusing on supplying the team with food, armor, tools, and weapons. They should be making furnaces and crafting extra armor for respawning players to grab quickly. Additionally, they should guard the team's supply and act as last defense. Finally, there should be a team of two to three players that is focusing on teching up the team or preventing the other team from teching up. There are two ways to tech up on Calamity, the Iron Route or the Experience Route. While it's possible to control both the upper and lower areas, it is more typical that teams will trade off on what tech they have. In fact, the fight over the control of these tech areas make up the majority of the conflict in Calamity. The experience pad is the center of the XP tech route. Usage of the experience pad and the enchanting vestibule is explained in the advanced mechanics section of the video. Typically, when holding the experience pad, teams will fortify the area in order to guard against intruders and arrows from above. The lower area features a rich iron mine. Iron veins become denser the deeper you go. Just above and next to the mine are haste pads. Typically one member will be mining while the other keeps watch and activates the haste pad to speed up the mining process. Both tech routes present unique risk and rewards. 10 levels usually enough to arm one team member with a power 2 bow or a sharpness sword. However, in order to see the return from this, they need to actually strike true. Additionally, if a team member dies before reaching level 10, they will lose all their progress and must start again. Iron armor, however, gives your team better protection, but requires time to mine and cook. Additionally, iron can be stolen at various times. Miners could be attacked inside and outside of the mine. Iron can be stolen from furnaces and chests, as well as dead bodies. If your team has been able to tech up successfully while hindering the other team from teching up, it may be a signal that your team can push forward towards the enemy bastion. There are two crucial areas to aim for in teching. The strength pad and the enemy arrow pad. Again, both options present their own challenges and benefits. The strength pad is relatively easy to get to without anyone noticing. It is also closer to the objective. However, once you have activated the pad and your opponents are aware of your location, it can be difficult to advance upwards due to arrow fire. Alternatively, the arrow pad is quite exposed and your movements to it will be obviously telegraphed. If you do manage to take this high area, it will be easy to hold as long as you have the arrows. If your opponents have set up camp in the upper area, you will gain access to their chest and teammates in the valley can help by taking the resistance pad to help the final push towards the bastion. Once inside the bastion, you want to remove all access points, namely the up and down ladders, as well as the front door. It is recommended that you use something that an axe cannot break down since respawning players will have immediate access to wooden axes. Hold off the body rush and win. If your team has fallen behind and it looks like you may be facing a push, it may be wise to bunker down for a stronger defense. It is recommended that you bring back some minor armor, tools, and weapons so that you can body rush more effectively when on the defense. It is not recommended that you should wall off your own bastion unless you plan to stay there for a long time. If opponent manages to sneak in, you will not be notified until the button is pushed, and this means that they have all the time in the world to get past your wall before hitting the button and then using your own wall against you when the time is of the essence. Learn to recognize when enemies are trying to lock down a strength or resistance pad and pelter them with arrows. Coordinate with a body rush or teammate and keep the opponents off these momentum granting pads. 
Sometimes the best defense is a good offense. If your team is behind, you may need to resort to some sneaky business. All you really need for tunneling is two stone picks, but it's also recommended that you bring about half a stack of building blocks and a shovel with you just in case. There are several places where you can start a tunnel. You can hide one next to your haste pad, or start one next to your own strength pad. Though it is possible to start a tunnel from the upper area, these areas tend to be more noticeable than the lower areas, which is why those are more recommended. Note that you'll be bridging as much as you are tunneling, and usually, if the opposite team looks back towards their side from your end, they will see your bridge. Typically, tunnels will end up in the enchanting area of your enemy's bastion. From there, you can break into the button room either by using the ladders or by going around the outside. Rushes in the early game can also give your team a slight edge. There are three kinds of rushes. Rushes for tech, rush for the button, and rush just to disrupt and annoy your opponents. A rush for tech is fairly simple. You head to the XP pad or mines as soon as you can. For experience, you don't really need anything, but you will need some wood before you mine. How much you prepare before going to a tech is dependent on your strategy. Rushing for the button requires a bit of luck and guile. You can access the upper area fairly quickly with just two logs. From there, you can access this lower parkour course, which can get you into the button room before your opponents will have a pick. Since your opponents may not have a pick ready to break in and stop you, you can easily get 50% on their machine before they catch on. Disruption pushes also use this upper area, but for different effects. From here, you can jump down and use an axe on your opponent's chest and take away their extra leather and food. Additionally, you can also block off this area here and prevent people from accessing the ladder to the arrows. Calamity offers many options. These are just some of the basic ideas to get you started. If you want to share some ideas or thoughts, post in the comments below. The best thing to do now is to find some people and play with them and have lots of fun on Calamity. I will continue to put games up of this map on my channel, so be sure to subscribe and give a thumbs up on this video if you found it helpful. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.